This is the most fun I had in a long time. Let's rock, my friends. Hello, my friends. How are you doing? Today, I'm going to show you something that's called Vectors to 3D or Vector to 3D, depending if you look here or there. And this is not technically AI, but it's still useful for AI and is a lot of fun to use. This is on a website called Figma. You can click here on the Open In button and then it asks you if you want to create a new project for design. So this is kind of a design website or you can go up here to this button that is for plugins. You click on that and here you have a search. You can search here for Vector to 3D. Yeah, it looks a little bit like a little monster and you click on that and this is going to be added to your project. Now, the way this works is here on your background, you can import vector files or you can use these kind of demo vector files you can see here and from there you simply click on one and then you click over here to convert from select that and this will then use this to create a version of that in 3d now this looks a little bit strange right now you can by the way just mouse click and drag to rotate this around but you have a lot of settings here on the right side by the way if you think is this free or is it not free it's not free you have a upgrade here for a pro version that you need. Uh, you buy that once, as it says here, it's a one time purchase, $19, and then you can use it for life. You can also export the 3D models. That is very useful. If you want to do more with that, you can also PNG download the images. However, if you just want to use it for creating 3D shapes that then you use as an input for your AI images, you can just screenshot it basically. So let's have a look at the controls here. So there's two different things you can do here you can extrude extruding means that it's just using the layer that it sees and makes it higher in one direction and the other one is inflate i'm actually going to switch to the other graphic here because this gives us a better impression of what is happening so right now we are in extrude and you can see that this is just making all of these layers higher and then also stack them on top of each other if i have inflate on the other hand this is turning it basically into a balloon or into a pill in this case. So if I turn it to the side, you can see that this is then round and looks like it's blown up and you can even inflate that more. Now there's two settings here. One is thickness. Thickness just makes it wider but doesn't inflate it more. So let's see that. Let's push this up here and you can see that suddenly we have a very wide shape. Let's go here, make the size a little bit smaller so we see everything. So this is now um, deeper but it's it's not more inflated. So let's set this back to the smaller size like so with the slider. And then when you go down here, you have the material, you have the render quality and the resolution, things like that. And here you have inflate. Now, if I inflate the volume more, you can see that it's starting to be blown up a lot more, becomes more of a bubble, more of a balloon. And of course, you can play with these settings. By the way, this kind of flickering, this is when it's rendering the preview for you, which is also very nice. And you can adjust actually the quality if you don't want to have that. You simply set this to preview and this is then not going to... Um, render it that much for you. So let's inflate that a little bit less. Inflation volume. You also have here the mesh quality, so you can set this. If it's like really low, you have this kind of low poly model. That can also be nice. That could be an interesting way for low poly models you want to create from vector files to have this kind of vintage gaming shape. But you also can go higher here to have much smoother shapes if you want to. Another thing you have here that is pretty important is up here, small object is thinner. If you don't turn that on, this is looking like that. And that can be very strange depending on the graphics, of course, but also depending on the thickness to set here. So if I have a strong thickness, it suddenly looks like that. And then of course, it's not what you want to have. So this is why in most cases, you want to have the small objects thinner, and then they are not extruded as much as the big object. Depending on how thin and small the object is, it's extruded or inflated less. And um, down here, this is also the movement to turn it around if you like that better. Personally, I like better to click in here and drag it because it feels more like you're actually grabbing it. And then let's go here. You have here, for example, metallic or other settings here. But what you can also do is here you can set, for example, 
a material color. And this is always setting the color for all of the elements in here. And of course you can click here and you choose a different color. Let's set it for pink, for example. You are able to select individual elements. Here on the left side, you have the list. You see here a list of all the elements that are in here. They will be highlighted when you mouse over them so that you can select them and know what you're selecting. As you see, you can also move them around. You can rotate them. You can resize them. So you even have the ability to readjust the 3D model to your liking. For example, if you want to have the eyes closer together, things like that, you can do that here. And on top of that, you can also here with the selected menu here on the right side, you can do individual settings. For example, you can say that I want to have this extruded compared to the other eye, or you want to have it thicker. Maybe you want an eye to stick out. So you have some adjustability in here. However, one thing I did not find in here is color adjustment for the individual elements. Kind of strange. Anyways, Let's go back here to the global menu because there is something else that is interesting here. When you select extrude, you have some additional options. So you have to scroll down and there you see the extrude options. And here you can choose the bevel and then also the form of the bevel. So let's play with this and select, for example, this one here. And then I will make this stronger like so. And you can already see we have this kind of edge now around the edge of the object. And when you select a different shape, this is of course then turning into a different shape. You see when I rotate that, now this has this kind of sharp lip that is coming up around all of the object. So even here you have the ability to adjust the things to your liking and create the shape you want. So for example, in this case, if you have the round bevel edge, this looks like a pill now. So you can do some really fun, cool things here. Now, of course, you could do something like that inside of Blender, but that requires for you to have all of the knowledge on how to extrude something, convert it, clean the shapes up, things like that. It's a whole process. This is a lot easier. So if you want to do that a lot, it might be worth the money. And on top of that, you also have the ability up here to create presets of what you have saved. And also one more thing that's very important here is you have light and shadows. You can set the light direction any way you want. Maybe you want to have something more spooky with the light coming from below. And then on top of that, you can set the major light and the fill lights to different colors. So let's set this, for example, to red. And then we set the other one to a bright blue. And so you can see that now we have different colors in here for our light situation. Another thing you can do is to load your own environment light map. You need for that an HDRI file. I found here a free file you can download with these windows on them. And as you can see here, they are reflecting in the surface. Now, the way I did that is when you go up here and you reduce the roughness to zero and then you set the metallic up to a value that you like. And then also I changed the color here, everything to pink so that you see these kind of reflections more. But of course, you can also leave it with the original colors. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. I had a lot of fun with this tool. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.